This project video is a bit of a different one, and kind of a behind the scenes look at some of the work that goes into making videos, or at least one of the pieces of equipment that we use to make our content. This is also a bit of a different sort of video because if you haven't noticed already, this is quite a long one. The vast majority of this video was filmed narrating to the onboard camera microphone, and this project took place in March of 2018. So some of the things talked about or referred to are a bit dated. Part of the reason this video sat around for so long is that I couldn't quite figure out how to edit it. At the start of this project, I decided I would try to film as much of the process as possible. That means there is a whole lot of footage. And it only got more and more out of hand as we kept revising our designs and changing our plans. And after filming it all, I realized it was way too long and I didn't really know what to do with it, so the footage ended up sitting around, well, until now. I finally made the decision to edit this as one long video and show the whole process, revisions and failures in all. A lot of the actual work, like cutting and grinding and stuff, was sped up because otherwise the video would be just too boring and the length would be way out of hand. So I hope somebody out there will find this process and this long video at least a little bit interesting. Even though there is still a huge amount of editing in this video, it's probably the most uncut, straightforward look at one of our projects yet. Anyway, even this intro to this long video is dragging on far too long. So, for the next 50 or so minutes, I'll hand you off to 2018 me. So this isn't a car video, but it is a project. I've been using this tripod for 10 years now, and I've had it longer than that. And it's kind of starting to fall apart. These aren't staying on anymore, which makes it hard to get the tripod legs tight, which means you lean on it a bit and it retracts, and the whole thing gets a little unstable. All the plastic trim is completely coming apart. I think that was the last of it right there. You can see that the legs are uh, kind of pulling off of their pivot mount here. This thing is old, and I'm still going to be using it, but it's kind of falling apart and it just doesn't do everything that I want out of a camera mount. For all those Firebird Supercharger videos, the camera was pretty far back because this is as close as I could get it to the engine bay. And when you have such an enormous engine bay, that means you're pretty far away from the actual work. The primary camera I use to film is a Sony RX100, and the zoom is only like seven times. So when this is as close as the tripod will get, it makes it difficult to get up close to things. So what I can do is clamp the camera onto something nearby what I'm working on, and that could kind of help, but it's really time consuming, and usually still ends up with an imperfect shot. Another issue, and although I love this tripod, it's a bit time consuming to significantly raise or lower the camera when it's on this tripod, so I'll usually end up with this fixed height. This tripod also doesn't go very low. The lowest it goes is maybe a foot and a half, two feet off the ground, and that will not fit under a vehicle on jack stands. So I want something that can film over an engine bay, that can be up high for an overhead workbench shot, and down low to get underneath a vehicle. I need something that's stable, but I can quickly move around to get different angles on a shot. So what does that look like? Well, I sat down with a thinking cap on and I came up with some basic plans and some pretty specific designs for the camera arm that we're gonna make in this video. I haven't seen something quite like this before, but that doesn't mean it's not out there. I was inspired by a lot of different sources really, including actually the overhead light at a dentist's office. And a video from a while back where the YouTuber AVE showed his camera setup for filming his workbench and all sorts of other things, and all it was was a brake rotor on the ground with a steel pipe coming up and an arm coming off of that to hold the camera. I've been thinking about how to make that design better work for me, and I think this is it. So all we have to do is make these drawings on paper come to life. And that's what all this is for. I've got this aluminum for the arm, the steel for the base and some other pieces, and a whole lot of bolts and washers. So basically there's two parts to my plan. The first part is a base. It'll be steel, it'll be heavy, and it'll have a little bit of a foot so that the camera can be leaned far forward without the whole thing toppling over. So the base will be completely made out of steel. The other part is the arm. It'll have a movable arm. Another goal here is to keep this thing really modular so I could change it on the fly to film pretty much anything. But I think it'll be three two-foot sections of aluminum to start with. And then we'll make a little steel head for the end of that that actually holds the camera and lets it 
articulate a little bit. I also have some basic ideas for how to build an arm that splits off of this one to hold a light fixture to light up what we're filming. But other than the basic plan for that one, I think we're just gonna make the main unit first and see how it works and see what needs to be changed in the design. This is about as prototype as prototype gets. I have some pretty specific designs for the base, but for the rest of it, we're just kinda gonna wing it. But that's half of the fun, isn't it? So the legs of the base will be made out of this three quarter inch, 16 gauge square tube, and I need three pieces of it. Two 18 inch pieces, and a four inch piece. And then we have this inch and a quarter, 16 gauge square tube, and we need two eight inch sections of this, and a six inch section. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut out these pieces for the base and see how that looks. So this is about how I want this laid out. And I came up with somewhere around 14 inches at this angle. Yeah, 14 looks about right. And I'll loosely soften up these angles so that we can get this uh, more aligned how I want it. Nice thing about making your own thing is that nobody else knows what it's supposed to look like. And maybe you don't even. Okay, that came out pretty well. I actually kind of like the look of it as is, and if I want to cut this off later, I can. But I kind of, I'm actually kind of digging the, uh, little claws sticking out the back there, so we're gonna leave that there for now. So then, let's see, the six inch piece sits there, so it comes out to around there. Eight inch cross piece meets up with it. Looks like that needs to be a little longer. Let's get the last piece of the puzzle and see what this looks like. The S10 just keeps giving and giving. Here are our weights for this base. I'll start it off with both rotors, if that seems like too much weight, I'll take one off. The rotors are only gonna be bolted on. Again, I wanna to try to keep everything modular. Yeah, like this length right here. Yeah, that is exactly five inches. So let's take off the six inch piece and measure out one that is five inches long. I should note that because these tolerances aren't exact and really just go along with whatever happens, I'm not really accounting for the width of the blade in these measurements, but the line of Sharpie is about as wide as the blade is, so it should be kind of close. But if you're doing anything really exact, you always need to account for the width of the cut. So at five inches, the eight inch length is about perfect. A little bit off of this height, that doesn't need to be quite so tall. And add one line here, so now we have a 9 inch and a 7 inch section. Let's just give this, let's give this 8 and a half. So now we got 8 and a half and 7 and a half and a 5. So let's go ahead and get this inch and a quarter cut. We have a five inch section here, the eight and a half inch section, and the seven inch section is our upright. On top of that, brake rotors. And I thought about whether I want to offset this or not. I don't think I do. I think we'll keep the mast centered on the base. So uh, yeah, that's, that's it. Looks a little funny. Looks like some kind of weightlifting equipment. But uh, this is going to be our camera base. The only things left to do are clean this stuff up and weld it together. I'll start by knocking the corners off of this cross beam. This one purely for looks. I think maybe we can slant the back end a hair. You know, if I cut this, I would also want to cut this at an angle. Yeah, I don't feel like it. This is totally fine like this. And I guess I'm putting a little too much thought into something that after this, nobody's ever gonna see except for me. But this is looking good. Those pieces are solid. I'm just going to take all these to the belt sander and smooth up the edges and we'll get to welding. Now 
and then we'll use non-chlorinated brake cleaner to clean up the outsides of these pieces. Okay, that'll be clean enough for our purposes. So we'll clamp this down to the workbench and we'll try not to light it on fire. We'll see where the evening takes us. Now let's get everything lined up where we want it. Let's actually use the edge of the table here and we'll clamp them down. Just wiggle it all around until it is aesthetically pleasing. Okay, that looks good to me. Okay, so we'll go ahead and tack weld this. Now we're just using flux core wire in the Harbor Freight welder, and I'm not very good at it. So keep that in mind when you see the welds. I'm just gonna set this on the ground and eyeball it. That looks pretty good to my eyeballs. Yeah, that's pretty even. It'll definitely be good enough for this. And I'm just gonna check one more time on how this is all fitting together. Yeah, that'll, uh, that'll do it. Okay, let's go ahead and tack weld the upper parts on. Line it up at the back here. That's four and seven eighths. Okay, let's go ahead and tack that on. Okay, she's coming together now. Wow, I got that on there. I got that on there pretty darn good, huh? And then we have the mast, and I decided we would just center it, but I need to uh, grind that down. That was a little bit of an oversight. There we go. It's like it never happened. And then our upright goes right there. I'll make sure it's as straight as I can get it. Okay, that's on pretty darn straight, actually. I'm just gonna hold it there with magnets. They make these nice 90 degree corner magnets for welding. Uh, uh, I am too cheap to buy them. Good, turn the welder on for it to be more effective. That's looking pretty good. Well, it's actually got a bit of a lean to it. Just going to give it a tap. I attack welded it a little too well. There. Here we go. Now we're just going to speak this over real carefully. Okay, it looks like it's on there straight. I'm going to throw a couple more tacks on there just to make sure it doesn't move while we test fit everything together. So let's go ahead and test fit these rotors. Everything here seems great. So what we'll go ahead and do is fully weld the base together. I'm gonna jump around from seam to seam to try to keep everything from getting too hot here because we don't wanna warp it. Okay, it's going fairly well so far. We had one or two edge spots where it tried to burn through, but no holes at the current time. 
Let's let it cool down a bit while it's still clamped down and then we'll flip it over and hit all the other joints we can get to. Okay, so now it is fully welded. I'll let it cool down and clean it up the best I can with a wire brush. Hang on, have I been making a killer slingshot this whole time? I mean, look at it. Bang, bang. I figured that sooner or later things might try to come loose and to get the arms as tight as I want them to be, I might have to crank down on the pivot bolts. So I thought about a couple different ways to solve this, and I think the cheapest one is to use some washers. So this is a stack of 11 washers on a 3 8 inch bolt, and I tighten down the nut to keep everything together, and I'm going to take the welder and draw two lines across this to hold all the washers together. Then we'll have one big solid spacer to run through the square channel to prevent it from collapsing if we crank down on the bolts. Since I didn't clean the zinc off these washers, you want to make sure you're breathing in as little smoke as possible. Of course, you don't normally want to breathe the smoke, but you definitely don't want to breathe it when there's all this extra stuff in it. That's actually not half bad. It's a little ugly, but it'll be inside there anyway, so you'll never see it. Just to make 100% sure everything's lined up in there, I'm going to run a 3 8 inch drill through it. But otherwise, we're ready to drill the through hole and weld in the spacer. I just pulled this piece of steel out of the scrap bin and want something a little bit wider to cap this off so that the pan head has something to really lock down on. So this is a one and a half inch wide strip and we'll cut a one and a half inch wide piece out of it so that we have a nice square to weld on the end of this tube. So we'll go ahead and drill a hole in the center of this to locate the bolt. So this will be the base for the pan head to mount on. Here's the pan head I'm planning to use. I just took this off of one of my other tripods. You can see it's 3 8 by 16 thread, but that bolt is too long. I'll trim a bit off of this. Now we will clean up all these parts on the belt sander. Okay, so here's how the plate that holds on the pan head is going to mount. So it'll be just like that. I thought about how to do this, and I realized if I weld it in here and then weld it to the plate, it might be crooked and then things won't tighten down correctly. And if I weld it to the plate and then weld it in here, is still the chance that it could come loose. So what I'm going to do is actually leave a bit of a gap, something like that, and fill that in with weld. Then there's no way this would ever come apart. I cut this little square out of that three quarter inch strap steel and we're going to weld it on the bottom here and then sand off all the welds and hopefully we'll have a nice little capsule. And then we'll have to drill a hole through it for the through bolt. Having this cap here both makes it look nice and gives the tube some extra rigidity since there's not going to be a spacer on the inside keeping everything from collapsing. We'll let this cool down a bit and then use the belt sander to smooth it all out. Now we're going to take some of this steel strap and cut little squares out to weld on as end caps for all of the pieces of the base. That'll keep out moisture and prevent the steel from rusting from the inside out. And it's a nice visual touch. So now we've got all these tabs to block off the ends of the tubes, but we still have to drill the through hole and install the spacer before we can do that. I'm going to actually just eyeball this based off of the washer here. So we say, I want the hole drilled right about there. And I don't really want to go straight through since we don't have the drill press over here right now, so I'm just going to 
Measure it out and drill each side individually. And then we can take our spacer feed a bolt through and tighten that up and with that on there real tight so that this is actually getting compressed a little bit we can go back to the welder and weld the ends of the washer spacer to the steel tube okay that should do the trick now we're going to weld the end cap onto there And then I'll pull the bolt out and smooth the top over with the angle grinder. After having some time to reconsider, I decided I don't feel like capping off the other ends. It's just too much work. It'll be fine leaving the other tubes open. Since I decided I'm not gonna cap these off, I'm gonna spend a minute here with the grinder just smoothing over a couple of these edges and a really rough welds. In addition to smoothing off corners and cleaning off the slag, I also need to grind off the welds at the very bottom so that it can sit flat. Since I'm not gonna cap them off, I also need to deburr the insides of the tubes to make sure there's no sharp edges. And I need to clean up the pan head mount in the same way. And now I'll drill the hole for the pivot bolt through the pan head attachment. So now we'll figure out how the brake rotors will sit on here. And now we'll drill the mounting holes for the rotor bolts. Okay, now let's make sure this goes together. There we go. That is our camera base basically done. And I'll also use bolts back here to hold the rotors together, partially for kicks and partially because we can use these to attach tabs for other accessories and little parts later on. And I wanted to figure out some kind of handle because this is pretty awkward and quite heavy. So maybe something that like hooks onto these bolts and uh, you grab like that. I really haven't thought too much about that. But here we go. Here's This is pretty much the entire base finished. And now we come to the aluminum tubing that are going to be the segments of the arm to hold the camera. So we'll cut each of these four foot pieces in half and use three of those pieces to make three two foot long arms. To cut this, I'm just going to use a handsaw. And then we'll go ahead and cut the other tube. And then we need to clean up our arm segments. So we'll take them over to the belt sander and we'll just be touching them to it very briefly. Even though it's an old belt, we still don't want to clog it up with a whole lot of aluminum. Okay, so here are three segments for the camera arm. We'll have to drill each side of each one.
Okay, now we just have a lot of holes to drill. And now for a bit of a moment of truth. Let's bolt this arm together and see how stable it is. And for now I'll just snug these up since the spacers aren't inside of the aluminum tube. This whole thing is definitely going to need some rubber feet. And that was always the plan, so no big deal there. This was another concern, the vibration. I'm thinking this is going to need to have some kind of damper on these arms. I'm not too sure how I want to do that yet, though. There's definitely an issue with oscillation. I wonder if I could maybe double up on the arms and uh, that would help. Every part of this design is subject to change really. And I was always kind of wondering if I was going to end up uh, doubling up on the arms and I think I will have to. So I had gotten wing nuts to use for these, but the rate at which they seem to loosen, I think they're just going to have to be lock nuts. Okay, here's one of my older cameras. This is a lighter weight one, and uh, yeah, this is going to be a problem. That's no good. Since I already have this extra two foot section, we'll clean this up, drill it, and try doubling up on that bottommost support. And if that helps, I'll probably end up doing that all the way up top to the camera. It still has a tendency to vibrate, but it definitely doesn't last as long. The addition of this bungee cord also makes it much more stable. So what I think I'm going to do is get two more 48 inch lengths of aluminum square tube. So there's two attaching to the base, three in the center, and two up towards the camera mount. I'm relatively hopeful that will get rid of a lot of that swaying. And I might add some tabs that tie down from the edges of these down to these bolts on the brake rotor for even more support. It doesn't seem like this thing even remotely wants to tip over though, so that's good. So it's the next day and I've got some more parts. These 8 foot aluminum tubes were price marked incorrectly so of course I had to get a little bit extra even if I don't have plans for it right now. Along with that I got some longer bolts and some half inch nuts that I think will also work as spacers for the arm. I must be stupid because I swore I tried this before and they didn't quite fit but two of these half inch nuts is really nice fit in these tubes and I won't have to trim anything at all. So we're just going to go ahead and use pairs of these in the tube instead of the washer spacers. So I'm going to cut three more two foot sections out of this tube so that there's three arm pieces here in the center and two at the top. And just like that, we have three more arm segments. I do want to point out that I've sized up from using a 3.8 drill bit for these holes to a 13.30 seconds. And that gives everything a little bit more play so that it's easier to get things lined up. Since I'm not drilling these like stacked together on a drill press or something, chances are things aren't going to perfectly line up by the 13.30 seconds 
gives everything just a little bit more wiggle room. So there's all the pieces of our arm laid out. There are seven segments in total. This time when putting it together, I'll use the half inch nuts and space everything out so we can get the bolts nice and tight and use lock nuts so they stay that way. And then we'll see how stable everything is. Okay, there's our setup. All we have to do is tighten these bolts down and see how stable it is. This thing fully extended vertically. It still does wobble, but some of that is also the base. I'm gonna need some better feet to put on this thing. So with it extended like this, I can tip it backwards, but it sure won't fall over. In this direction, that's, that's about the tipping point. In this direction, because of the legs, I don't think tipping over is going to be a problem. The shake is definitely reduced, but it still wants to just keep vibrating. I'm going to try binding the longer sections together with tape. Hopefully that'll prevent there from being so much vibration because the tubes are so long. I don't know. So some of the movement is coming from the steel base actually bending. So let's go ahead and make those tabs I talked about earlier, and I'll weld two more onto the base, and we'll make those brake rotors a structural member, and hopefully stiffen everything up. I think the tape might have helped a little bit actually to remove some of the resonance. I think I'll just bind the centers together, or maybe put a bolt through the center. I'll think about it. So I figure I can take this one inch strap and weld it to the base and drill it and have the rotor clamped down back here as well. That way it'll be bolted to this bottom section in two places. We'll say an inch and a half long. I'll make the cut at inch and three quarters just so that we make sure we don't cut it too short. This steel strap clamped in the vise is actually demonstrating exactly what's happening very well. You can have a short section that's very rigid, but give just a little bit of vibration to a long section, and it'll just keep on oscillating. So I cleaned both of these up on the sander. And uh, our mounting options here are pretty flexible since the bolt holes in the rotor are bigger than the bolts in them. So I think we'll just eyeball this and drill both these plates together and then we'll bolt it together and weld it up. So right now the rotors are giving us stability via their weight, but with these modifications we're also going to be using them as structure. So bolting everything together like this should help make it even more rigid. So there are mounting tabs. I'm just going to round over the outside edges a little bit more, just so the corners aren't quite as sharp. I'm gonna try to space this out so everything is even. And we'll tack weld the tabs onto the square tube And then we'll fully weld the tabs on. And then we'll try to clean up the mess I just made with the grinder. And now that it's all flat, we'll go ahead and bolt the brake rotors back on. The holes even line up, wow!
Okay, now everything is bolted tightly together. That'll increase the rigidity of this entire piece. Next up, we'll make two tabs that connect to the outside of the bolt here after you put the arms on. Alright, so that's our setup. I'm going to try to space it so there's one washer on each side. So I have to decide if I just want it offset. It's going to be three inches tall. Let's say just over an inch of overhang here. Let's say an inch and a quarter. So two and three quarters tall plus inch and a quarter. It's four inches and we'll add a quarter inch for error. So four and a quarter inches for that tab. So let's give this a 90 degree bend and just decide how much of a base we want on it. Say somewhere, somewhere on there. Looks pretty good. If anything, it's a little close to the uh, hole, but I think it'll be okay. So it looks decent, but it's actually a little close to uh, the edge of this hole, so depending on where the bolt wants to sit, might have to trim down a washer so that it can still fit on there. Or even just use a split lock or something. Either way, the bolt should fit, and I think we're going to be okay here. We just have to figure out where to drill the hole. And transfer this to the other side, because it'll be easier to drill this that way. Okay, that's, that's pretty good. If it's not perfect, it's okay because once these two hold downs will each kind of pull it a little bit and it'll keep tension on everything, which is exactly what we're looking for. So that's one down. It looks like the fitment should be about the same on this side. So what I think I'll do is just transfer everything from this, although obviously it'll have to be on the opposite side. That's opposite, looks good to me. Yeah, okay. So we'll go ahead and drill those holes out too. Okay, so there we are. Now we have our tabs. But before we assemble this with the tabs, there's one thing we need to take care of. One thing that I knew I would have to deal with but didn't really plan out in advance is the feet. No matter how flat this base is, the problem is the ground under it almost always won't be. Even the concrete garage floor isn't completely flat. So what this needs is some kind of rubber feet so that it can sit on slightly uneven ground and they should help dampen any vibration. And even though we're now at the stage where I have to make or install them, I still don't have a plan. What I think would be the best is like a tripod to have three. Unless there's a whole lot of give, anything with four legs on an uneven surface doesn't really work out, so it needs three. So two feet in the front and one right in the center on the back. Also like the feet of a tripod, it would be good if they were convex on the bottom to help on very uneven terrain. It doesn't need to be as round as a tripod's feet, since the angle against the ground isn't changing in this application, but a little bit of a curve would be nice for uneven ground. I thought about taking the feet off the old air compressor, or the really nice feet off of this one, but I kind of need to use this one, and the rubber's cracked on the old one, so I don't think they do as much dampening as I want them to do. 
I thought about stealing the feet off of this tripod, but before doing that I decided to just go to the hardware store and stare at different parts until I got an idea. And I'm glad I did because I sure like the look of these. These are feet for like collapsible chairs I guess, or tables, or really anything. And it's just, it's a nice soft rubber, and a 5 16 inch washer fits very nicely inside of it. So I think I know how to mount these. I have four, but I do think I'm gonna go with three. And this does mean it'll sit a little higher off the ground than I had planned. I might trim these down a little bit, but I think it'll be fine. I think having a bit of squish would be good for everything. So I figured out that a 3 8 inch bolt with two 5 16 inch washers and a half inch nut makes, is that a half inch? And a half inch nut makes a fantastic holder attachment point. And it's only well enough, I do not think it'll be coming off. So we're going to take three of these, drill holes for them, and just hold them on on the other side with a nut. I thought about welding a nut in, but at a certain point it's kind of overkill, I guess. You know what, no, what I'm gonna do is drill a hole and weld a nut on the bottom here, and then tighten the bolt up against it like this to hold the leg on. That way I don't have to have an extra long bolt or do anything funny to get a captive nut into this rear one. And for these two it means there's nothing on the top of the tube that might, I don't know, get caught on something. I'll just make these a little bit from the end so that by drilling a hole I'm not weakening anything too much. Uh, I think an inch and a quarter would be good. Let's, let's actually go for one inch. This does look awfully tall. I might actually try to cut maybe like three-eighths of an inch off of these to fit a little lower, but uh, we'll just see where the night takes us. I really wonder if I would be better served having four feet. So I'm thinking what I might do is actually drill holes to have four feet as well as three feet then at least I can choose which one I want later on. So I'll drop in a bolt with the nut partially threaded on. I'll weld the nut to the frame and then I can remove the bolt. And we'll be doing this five times. For a little bit of security I ended up fully welding all the nuts and then we'll clean them up with the angle grinder. Okay, now we have our attachment points, so let's figure out exactly how we're gonna mount the rubber feet. I cut about 3 16 of an inch off the foot, and that seems to be a good fit. So we're gonna go ahead, and for now we're going to install four of them, and we'll see how wobbly that is. I think it might be okay since these are so close together on like a mildly uneven surface and the rubber should help. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. And there are our feet. So let's try out these rubber feet. Yeah, it, it still wants to wobble a bit with four legs. Yeah, let's try it with three legs. So now let's try it with three feet. There is a bit of a desire to tip like this, but it wouldn't be able to, but it would be difficult for it to fall over like that. And also you have to consider there's gonna be at least another 20 or 30 pounds on it. So now let's put it back together and see how it does. So this is interesting. The arm is actually very stable now, and it's the base that's bouncing a little bit. So it's kind of just the whole thing shaking now. I wonder, I'm gonna go ahead and try it with four legs again, because I wonder if it's just not enough support on the back there by the one leg. But it's way better than before. It does stop oscillating on its own after maybe a second and a half. So it does steady out, which is very good. So 
So just have weight on all four legs. This does seem even better. It still takes a little bit, but it does stop shaking at least. So I'm still on a hunt for some kind of way to reduce the vibration in the unit. Of course it's gonna shake if I smack up against it. What I don't want is for it to continue shaking. I want it to settle down quickly and just hold still. In certain positions, the arm is very stiff and it works out, but in other positions like this one, it still takes a couple seconds for things to settle down. And while I think that is usable, I would like for it to be better. So instead of doing what we have been doing and trying to make everything more and more and more rigid, let's actually introduce a little bit of flexibility into the system. Specifically, the first thing I'm going to try is cutting some rubber washers and using them for the center section. The rubber will of course have a bit of play and I'm hoping it'll isolate everything and just take up some of the vibration and prevent it from wobbling so much. For this first try, we'll just replace the inner washers with rubber ones and we'll make sure it still articulates right. So we need to cut eight rubber washers for the center arm. I bought this rubber sheet ages ago and I've been using it for years now. It's incredibly useful to have around. So we're going to cut washers out of this. Something I hadn't considered until really just now is that this also makes a decent table or tool holder or something. So extra use. I'm gonna use a three eighths inch punch for the center holes. And then we'll just cut the washers out by hand. So there we go. They're very basic, but we have eight rubber washers. And we'll get these installed and see how that helps. It's better. It's definitely better. After just replacing the washers in the bottom joint, it's definitely better. However, it doesn't articulate quite as nicely, and it's a little noisy. But since it only makes the noise when you're moving it, that's not a big concern. I might even try making some hard plastic washers if this works out with the rubber because the rubber is a little bouncy maybe, but it does stop the oscillation pretty quickly. So the rubber washers help a lot with the vibration and it does become much more stable, much faster. However, there are two issues. First is that the whole structure just has a lot of bounce. The rubber is actually probably too soft because it's actually introduced a lot of rotational play that wasn't there before. The other problem is that because I had to squish the rubber so it would support the weight of the arm and the camera, it's a whole lot harder to actually articulate the arm and it's not the most practical thing in the world anymore. But it seems that the theory is sound. We just need a different material. So just like we did for the rubber, we're going to try cutting out some plastic washers. This plastic is actually from the bumper of the Silverado back when I cut it a couple years ago. I don't actually know what kind of plastic it is, but it's very sturdy and quite flexible. I used it for a handful of things and it's a little hard to cut, but it holds up to just about anything and it might be a good choice for this application. I even wonder if it might be a good idea to combine plastic and rubber by having plastic washers on the inside of the arms and rubber and plastic washers on the outside. So we'll go ahead and cut out 10 washers. So we'll go ahead and cut 12 washers out of this material. So there we have 12 plastic washers now. They're not the prettiest and some of these are a little thin, but since the bolts aren't all that tight, I think we will be okay. So the combination of plastic and rubber washers has yielded the best result yet. It doesn't smooth out quite as quickly as it did with only the rubber washers, but it smooths out faster than the metal and relatively quickly. And it's about as close to stable as we can hope for by maybe five or six seconds later. 
With the plastic washers in there though, it also articulates fairly easily. I think this is the winning combination, at least for now. I'm going to try putting plastic washers in the base as well, but I think this is about as good as it's going to get, barring some other modification. The camera sits nice and stable, and the thing that's bending here is actually the aluminum tubing on the lower section. I wonder if it would actually be a good idea to add more pieces onto that, to make it four pieces wide at the bottom. But I'm not too sure how much it'll actually help the wobble. One big takeaway is that I think the weight of the arm is actually not as big a deal as I thought it would be. So for the most part, that's the arm finished. Like I said, I still have a couple of ideas on how to make this thing more stable, and I need to paint the steel parts so they won't rust. So this project isn't finished. I've had a lot of ideas like even maybe filling these with expanding foam, or just using more tape like that. So of course there are a lot of other things to consider. It's been several months since we built this camera rig, and we've used it to film all sorts of things. For the most part, it has replaced my tripod in the garage, but there are definitely some takeaways from this build. I can never make anything but the steel washers work for the arm. The rubber ones dampened vibration really well, but after moving the arm just a handful of times, they completely fell apart. Plastic washers lasted longer and dampened some vibration, but in the end, they also fell apart. It still has that same wobble, but as long as the camera is stabilized before recording, it doesn't really seem to be an issue. The range of movement is fantastic, and it's made filming a lot of things much easier. I'm probably going to take off one of the brake rotors because it's just too heavy. It has no desire to tip over, but it's just impractical to move it around. I also never got around to painting it, so there's a little bit of rust here and there, but I might still try to take care of that in the future. All in all, I would consider this project a big success. And that would have been the end of the video, but that last bit of voiceover was recorded almost exactly a year ago, so a few things have happened since then, and I guess we should talk about them. The original plan was to cut the bolts flush, but I ended up actually holding onto those sections a lot when adjusting. It, it's kind of a nice little handle, so I just stuck vacuum caps on the ends to prevent them from scratching anything up. I kind of developed some different methods of moving it around, and because it's so heavy, I just kind of slid it around on the floor a lot. And then you can hold it down with your foot and use a little bit of pressure to adjust it and hold the camera where you want it to be. But this would only get me so far, because sooner or later I would have to pick it up to move it around sometimes. We ended up taking off one of the brake rotors to lighten things up. This made it a little too light, so we just stuck some extra bolts and nuts on there to weigh it down a bit, and it still seems plenty stable. If you lean out the arm real far, it will start to tip over, but I've never actually had to have the camera in that position, so it's never been a problem. An idea I had to loosen up the movement of the arm was to use bearings in place of just the plain steel washers. I was able to get a bunch of these 10mm inner diameter thrust bearings off of eBay for surprisingly cheap, so I figured we'd give this a try. We applied grease to the bearings and put them in between each section of the arm. It broke a few of the bearing washers before we realized they needed a really smooth surface and a washer on the outside of each one. It was a reasonably neat installation and everything moved super easily. The problem was that it moved too easily. I tightened down one of the pivots so hard that it stripped the threads off the bolt, but it would still move with even a little bit of weight on it. So maybe I should have seen it coming, but the bearing idea was a failure. What did come out of it though was using the flat washers that came with the bearings since they are really hard and really smooth. This is how the camera arm currently sits and it seems like it does move a bit more smoothly. You can still tighten down those pivots enough that everything stays where it should, but it doesn't stick quite as hard in that position. I keep thinking about redesigning the arm and even got some springs to use on it, but I can't really come up with anything that will keep the range of motion that I want and add a little bit of stability. Throughout the design and revision process, I got really obsessed with the idea of making it super duper stable. The thing is, once I started using it, I realized it didn't really actually matter all that much. 
All I really have to do is press record on the camera, hold it still for half a second, and give it maybe a second or two to smooth out on its own, and once it stops oscillating, it stays pretty darn still. There have definitely been clips where this shake is a little bit visible at the beginning if I start working too soon, but if I just wait a maximum of five seconds, it really isn't a problem. The only time this is really a problem is using it outdoors on a windy day. Then, unless it's on the ground under the vehicle, it's not really stable enough to stay still. I've also expanded my arsenal of tripods and various types of camera mounts, so I don't need this in quite as many situations as I used to. It is a decent jack-of-all-trades kind of camera stand, but it can also be surpassed in certain areas by other types of mounts. Also, the camera we're currently using to film is an interchangeable lens model, so if we need to get it a little closer, we could always just put on a zoom lens. But the camera arm we made in this video will still get different angles that you just can't achieve with a regular tripod. And it lets you set up the camera at those angles even more quickly and with less limitations than most other types of mounts. So, as I said at the end of that last section, I do think this project was a success. Is there still room for improvement? Absolutely, and I'm curious to see what ideas you all might have about improving it or redesigning a different model in the future. And if anyone has actually gotten through this incredibly long video, thanks for watching, thanks for sticking with us, and I hope you got some enjoyment or insight from this building process.